And welcome to another edition of DT Live. I hope everyone is doing well this evening, or afternoon, or morning, wherever it happens to be in your part of the world. I guess it's late afternoon, early evening where I'm at. Of course, this is a live stream. I haven't done one of these kinds of live streams in a while, so I thought today we'd do some stuff live because I've got quite a bit of interesting stuff I, I wanted to do today. Wanted to do some debugging, uh, got some issues opened on several of my GitLab repositories, and you know, some of it's going to require doing some scripting, doing some stuff in the terminal, doing some cool terminal commands. We may spin up some virtual machines to test out some stuff. Um, probably going to stream for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing today so let's see uh, everybody in the chat give me a yay or a nay on the audio because i'm not monitoring the uh, the youtube stream obviously let's see what up dt says david gomez david gomez what up dog <laughs> all right uh howdy says crazy chicken uh bobby says what's up zoltar says hey all right guys uh, aliens, yay, yay, Michael, yay, Cameron, yay. All right, so the audio is good. We may give uh, it a few more minutes before we really get into the heart of the video, just to give people a chance to get here. Although I did actually get, send out a notification for this one. This wasn't too impromptu. I gave you guys about a six hours uh, heads up time as far as that I'd be streaming today. So one of the things I want to do today, though, is I want to go to my GitLab. Let me open up the Brave browser and go to my GitLab. So my GitLab, I've got several repositories, obviously. I've got uh, a couple of dozen. Uh, but here lately, the most active one here in the last few days is the DTOS repository. I have several people that have filed bug reports on there. Uh, and some of them I'm going to take care of on camera. Uh, we may also take a look at some of the other repositories as well, because um, I've got some open issues and, and a few other repositories as well. We may debug the DTOS script, which I uh, get into the DTOS script. Let's see if I can open it. You know, this thing has been a work in progress. It has drastically <laughs> changed in the last few days. Not drastically changed, but we have, we've probably solved, I don't know, 25, 30 minor little, little paper cut issues, bugs that people have found. The great thing about doing uh, this public beta, you know, finally releasing it, knowing there were bugs in it, is people reported bugs. Bugs I would have never found on my own because... You know, I don't, I can't possibly run every single Arch Linux based distribution on the planet. So I've got people that, you know, we're testing it out on Endeavor and Garuda and Arco and Manjaro. And you guys were great because you found bugs in all of those, you know, that the, the DTOS script, you know, had issues with all of those, but it wasn't the same issue in each. You know, so it was nice having more people, more eyeballs on the code and more of you guys trying it out. Let's see. There's so many YouTubes live streaming today. Lots of content. Yeah, well, it's a Wednesday. You wouldn't think that many people would be live streaming in the middle of the week. Usually people like to live stream Friday nights. That seems to be a, a big deal on YouTube. Especially for the people that uh, don't live stream that often. Typically they'll do it on a weekend. I'm one of those people. I don't live stream that often. I actually try to avoid live streaming like on a Friday night because I know so many people will be live streaming at that time. You know, doing it on a, on a Monday or a Tuesday or something, you know, a slow night as far as, you know, YouTubers that are streaming. That's typically when I, when I do it. Also, I, I know a lot of the other Linux YouTubers. You know, a lot of those guys, some of them only do live streams. I kind of know their schedule. I, I don't want to step on their audience either when I live stream and sometimes I, I want to watch their live streams as well myself so I try to schedule things around that uh, let's see 
Let's go back to the chat for a few minutes before we get started. Uh, what do you think about the Anarchy installer? I don't know anything about the Anarchy installer. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Hi, Luke says... Hi, DT. I checked out DTOS, and I love it, I must say. Yeah, and I do want to go ahead and put this out there. All of you guys, and I know a lot of people have tried DTOS. I don't know. There's no telling how many people have actually tried to install the thing. Dozens, maybe hundreds. I have no numbers. <laughs> There's no way to tell. But I will say, everybody that has tried DTOS so far, there are errors in it. Even though it may look like it, it's working, and it is working, uh, there are things that are not working quite as I expected. <laughs> I'm going to uh, discuss a lot of those today on camera, which will help you guys if you've already installed DTOS and it's working fine for you. Keep running it. I'm going to tell you what the errors are, especially minor errors that just involve you changing a line or, of code here or there, you know, minor edits to a config file. I'll, I'll point you guys in the right direction to do that. Because I do know that everybody that has installed uh, DTOS so far, there is a pretty big error in XMOBAR, and I'm going to discuss that here, and it's a very simple fix. But I just noticed it today because somebody had posted it. Uh, I don't know why I never noticed it. All right, let's see. I'll read a couple of more comments before we get started. I'm thinking about shaving my head. Any tips? That's from Stephen. Uh, use good razors. You know, make sure that you use a razor with four or five blades. That's the main thing. Just use a good razor with a lot of blades. Let's see. Use DTOS script on my main PC, even though you told me not to, but it's working completely fine. Yeah. And that's the thing I, I've got, uh, even though I've got a lot of issues on GitLab, I, I've heard from tons of you guys that have actually tried it and were okay with it. So you, apparently most people did not experience any showstoppers with it, at least. Or maybe you experienced minor bugs and you just took care of the bugs yourself. Which is fine. If you do notice any issues, though, I, I would appreciate it if you did report it to GitLab. Just to make sure I know about it. So I can actually fix it for the next guy. Why do you use GitLab over GitHub? Uh, GitHub is owned by Microsoft. So I tend to use GitLab. <laughs> you know, I guess the more free uh, of the two. For talking about, you know... Free software, open source software, free and open source. Uh, nothing wrong, I guess, with GitHub, but the fact that it's owned by Microsoft and a lot of the a lot of GitHub is proprietary anyway. I mean, there's some proprietariness to GitLab too, but it's more open. Um, yeah, it's not owned by Microsoft, which is really nice. <laughs> yeah, somebody else said it for me. Yeah, <laughs> the fact that it's not owned by Microsoft does uh, that, that that's a big selling point. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get into what we're going to do here today. So I'm just going to quickly go to some of my GitLab repositories. We're going to find some bug reports people have opened, and I'm going to fix them here on camera. So I am going to step away from reading the chat for a little bit, but we'll come back to it. So let me switch over to the desktop and my browser here. I know you guys are not going to be able to read the font. Uh, well, let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to go to the DTOS repository here, and you see I've got at least one merge request. That came in just a few minutes before the stream started. We may go ahead. As a matter of fact, before we fix the bugs, let's take a look at the merge request. So what a merge request is, uh, those of you on uh, GitHub, they call it a uh, pull request, uh, merge request. It's where somebody makes a commit to the repository. So... His is fixed for multiple key server lines in gpg.conf. So what this is in the DTOS script, I have some lines where I add uh, my key servers, the URLs to my key servers, to uh, gpg.conf. And if I wanted to read his changes, I could click on changes here. So he is deleting these lines. Well, basically, he's modifying these lines. These were the lines that I originally wrote in the script. And it looks like he's making very minor alterations. Instead of using grip with dash Q, X, capital F, he's doing grip with dash Q, capital L. And according to him, this is for those that run DTOS more than one time. It prevents these lines from being added to gpg.conf more than once. So... 
Um, honestly, you shouldn't run D the DTOS installation script more than once. <laughs> like if it works, I can understand if it didn't work, you ran it and then had to run it again. But if you run it and it works, don't go back and ever run the DTOS script again because it's honestly not meant to be run over and over again. But I do like that he is uh, doing this just in case people do do that. So I actually will merge this. I'm going to go back to overview and I'm going to go ahead and merge. Now what I need to do is I need to open a terminal and I need to CD into my DTOS repository here locally on my machine. Uh, let me zoom in the terminal so you guys can see that. And if I do a uh, get status, it'll let me know uh, I've got something modified here that I also need to push, but I'm going to do a git pull because I want to get his new changes because he edited uh, readme.org and DTOS, the, the script. Let me go ahead, make sure he edited both files. He edited the readme and he did edit the script. Okay, because uh, not everybody uses Emacs and I know, you know, that's cool. But if you only edit the script and not the readme, which readme is really the script, you know, it, it converts to the script. That means I would have to go back and manually edit that. So I'm actually glad he edited both files. Um, now what I want to do, since I did that merge request, we probably should run uh, the DTOS script just to make sure it works. But before I do that, uh, just in case there's any other issues I want to take a look at, uh, this issue I was looking at right before the stream started, Xmobor, I mentioned it's broken. There is a script that for my Xmobor, you see Traeger is the SysTray at the top of the screen here in the top right. That is Traeger. And what this is, is uh, I've got a script that runs Traeger and dynamically resizes Traeger uh, and Xmobar to adjust for the, the amount of icons that are sitting in it. That way Traeger doesn't sit on top of widgets in Xmobar, which you can see right now it does. It's because that Traeger uh, script, that Traeger padding script, I actually do have it. In my config files, it actually gets placed in slash etsy slash dtos, but for some reason the dtos script, it doesn't transfer over that to your actual dot config slash xmobar, so the script is actually not running for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that right now. What I need to do is I need to fix the xmobar uh, package build. So let me go ahead and open Doom Emacs. I'll make it full screen. And I'm going to go, well, I'll show you guys. I've got all of my GitLab repositories in a folder called GitLab-repos. And then I have a repo called DTOS-package-build. And then x86-64 is the architecture. And then these are all the packages that I'm maintaining for DTOS. And one of the packages is DTOS-xmobar. And then package-build is the package-build. And right now, all it's doing is copying over Xmobar RC. So, you know, uh, you have an Xmobar RC that gets placed in slash Etsy slash DTOS. And then the package build, what it does is it moves that over into uh, .config Xmobar, Xmobar RC. Uh, but what we need to do is other than the Xmobar RC, there is that Traeger padding script. So we also need to make sure that gets moved over. I don't know how I missed this before when I made this package build. I don't know how I've missed this because I've installed uh, DTOS dozens of times in virtual machines. I guess I haven't noticed that Traeger was not actually working. But anyway, that simple line there should fix the problem. Now, the only problem is I've got to rebuild the package. So what I need to do is let me go to a different workspace, open a terminal, zoom in. Once again, I'm going to CD into GitLab-repos, and instead of DTOS-package-build, actually, let's go into DTOS-package-build. If I do an LS, I have two scripts here. One is a script to build the binaries, so it's going to uh, take all the package builds and run make package on them to build binaries. And then I have cleanup, which cleans up all the extra cruft. You know, it'll just leave uh, the package builds in the directory and it'll delete everything else. I'm also going to open a second terminal and I'm going to zoom in 
and I'm going to CD into my GitLab repos, DTOS-Core repo. And what this is, this is where those binaries we're about to create are going to go. So first, DTOS-Package Build. I have this script called uh, build packages. This is going to take a long time to run. Not a long time, but it'll take a few minutes. It's going to take every package in that x86 underscore 64 repo. And remember, I was maintaining, I don't know, 20 packages, 30 packages now in DTOS core repositories. So it's going to build binaries for all of that. And some of these binaries take a while to build. It's going to build a binary for Aura, which is a AUR helper written in Haskell. It's going to build uh, binaries for uh, Paru, which is another AUR helper. And the reason I'm maintaining those is those, uh, I, I don't want to install things from the AUR by default in DTOS. So those are some AUR packages I know I want on the system, but I'd rather maintain them in the DTOS core repository. So I'm going to maintain them myself. Anyway, I'm going to run this script. And this script is going to take a while. Actually, no, the script actually did not work. Cannot stat. Uh, DTOS.config xmobar trayer. All right. Hmm. Well, let me cd into x8664 DTOS dash xmobar. And let me just run the uh, make package command myself. I'm going to move my head here so you guys can see the command. Make package. I'm going to do make package space dash cf space dash dash sign. It's a signed package. Yeah, so it's not going to build correctly. So there was a problem with the package build. Uh, so let me go back into the DTOS XMO bar package build. Make it full screen here. Uh, no, I made that font huge there, but let's see. It's saying it couldn't stat this. And I know that, well, let me make sure that is the actual name of the file. I could actually have that file name wrong. So I'm going to open up PC Man FM. Where it's trying to source that is in a repository I have called DTOS-configs. Etsy, DTOS.config, XMOBAR, ah, trayer padding icon.sh. So the script, that is not the name of the script, trayer padding Icon. Okay. Uh, uh, a very easy mistake to make. Uh, now let me go back. Uh, before we do that, what I want to do is I want to run the uh, cleanup script. Let me CD back up two levels where that script is. See the cleanup script because we're going to have a, some dirty directories in there where it failed to build those packages. Now I'm going to build those packages with that script. Uh, still going to complain. Let me do an ls. Yeah, there's still crud in that directory. I guess the cleanup script did not. So let me remove all of that. Okay, and now the only thing left in there is the package build and then a dot install file. So let me CD back up to where the uh, build script is. And now it looks like it's going to work again. This is actually going to take a while. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a password here. And uh, assuming this works correctly, these binary packages, I'm going to take a while to build. And for those wondering what it's going to build, if I go into DTOS-package build, x86-64, it's building binaries for, for all of this. All right. Now let me catch it back up on the chat. Let's see. Uh, I've got a super chat from Meat Lotion. Oh, hey, DT. Longtime watcher and enjoyer of your content. Felt it was time I said hi. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. Let's see. 
Uh, DT, don't you think we need a ranking and review system for software apps, uh, OS, operating systems, even platforms like F-Droid? Uh, don't you think we need a ranking and review system for software? I mean, most app stores have a way for you to leave a review or leave a rating. Um, so I'm not sure what you're asking there. That was from Sir Robert Downey Sr. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think ratings necessarily. I mean, I guess they're useful. I'm more concerned with people leaving bugs. Uh, looks like there was a massive amount of spam in the chat. I do apologize because I wasn't paying attention to the screen. Um, I should make some of you guys moderators so you guys can clean up the spammers when <laughs> you guys see see what some of the uh, man this guy he must have left like 50 messages all of his messages have been deleted but it's it's a mess trying to read you guys you know the real messages let's see hey DT I'm curious why you didn't use maggot dude did you prefer did you do you prefer GitLab workflow I, I can use maggot but uh Sometimes I use a git bear repository for everything in my home directory, like my normal dot files repository, which we may play around in. And uh, maggot doesn't play well with git bear repositories. So because of that, because, and it doesn't make sense to use maggot for some of my repositories and have to do the terminal for others. I'll just do them all in the terminal. But there's nothing wrong with Maggot. If I didn't have that Git bear repository managing all of my dot files, I probably would just use Maggot for for all of this. And one of the things I need to do is I need to clean up my Emacs config for DTOS because I've got a ton of stuff in my Emacs config that doesn't necessarily need to be there uh, in DTOS. <laughs> you know, a lot of, I've got a lot of example code, code that I put in there. It's really bloated, and I put a ton of extra modules in my Emacs mainly because I do video. I've done videos about most of this stuff, and it's there for examples. But it's not necessarily stuff probably most people want or need. So eventually I'm going to slim down my uh, Emacs config to something, you know, more appropriate, I guess. Yeah, uh, John says ratings are subjective, I feel. Yeah, and that's the thing, yeah, ratings with software. I mean, I guess they're they're okay. I'm more concerned with people actually letting you know if the software works or not, you know. I never actually pay attention. Like when I go to like an app store or software center, I don't think I ever look at reviews or ratings. I don't, usually I know exactly the program I want and that's the, what I'm going to get. You know, I, I'm usually not there shopping for stuff I don't know about. But that that's just me. Yeah, do you work out at home or at the gym? Uh, at the gym. I didn't go today, but I went uh, Monday and Tuesday this week. But yeah, I try to go to the gym uh, you know, four, sometimes five days a week. Try to get in the gym pretty regularly. Yeah, this I, I've been uh, working out on a regular basis for probably five, six years now. Uh, Big Pod, hello. Mr. Daylight is here as well. Uh, he was the one asking about the gym. Do you think uh, about making an ISO with DTOS? Maybe eventually. The the thing with making a proper ISO and a proper distribution, the hard part is actually this. Making packages, making your own repository of software. So the fact that I've done this, you know, the DTOS script is, is kind of, you know, I could either make a standard like installation script where it's basically just a script that does a pseudo pacman dash s and then a list of software to install. You know, that's something very easy to do. And then building your own distribution is something much more difficult. And what I'm doing, I mean, I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> I've done a lot of the work toward eventually making a, a proper ISO. And certainly much more than just a simple, you know, installation script like most people would do just to keep and you know many people will just keep a package of uh, software you know push it to their github or their GitLab. that way every time they install whatever distribution they install they can quickly run that script and install all their packages from the standard repositories uh, obviously doing what i'm doing requires a bit more because i had to learn how 
obviously to package stuff, create these binaries, maintain my own repository in the the uh, DTOS script. You know, you guys got to get my keys because I signed all the packages and it's a, a lot of extra stuff to it more than just a standard like an installation script. And, and I wanted to do that because again, it's we're already close to maybe the end goal, which is eventually me actually packaging up a proper ISO. Let me see if the uh, build packages actually finished. So we have not checked on that. It looks like it did. It's waiting for a password here. So let me enter my sudo password. So I believe after I entered that, this sucker is pretty close to the end. Yes, yeah, building the last few packages. One thing is building all these binaries takes a ton of CPU. So when I ran that build packages script, the stream may have been buffering. I don't know. You guys can let me know, but I suspect the stream probably was buffering at certain parts of building these packages. Most of them, not so much, but there's a couple of big packages that it had to, to build from source. And I imagine it sucked up a lot of CPU and probably caused this, the stream to go a little wonky there. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that. Also, if we have to start downloading stuff from the internet, which we may do uh, later on with some of what we do, that will also, of course, cause the stream to buffer. But All right, the build packages script finished. So that takes care of the package builds. We just took all of our package builds. We've made new binaries, but we need to move those binaries over to DTOS core repo. If I ls in DTOS core repo, I have build-db, build the database. What this does, this is a script that takes all of those new binaries we just created over in DTOS-package build and moves them into DTOS-core-repo. This doesn't take much time at all. And then finally, I want to go back into DTOS-package build because remember I had a cleanup script. Let's run that. What this does is uh, any extra crud still left in this re uh, repository, anything that's not a package build or a dot install file gets deleted. And now what I need to do is I need to push all of this. So if I do a get status here, you know, that's everything that has changed. It looks like we're going to have some new packages here. Let's add them. So I'll just add everything. I'll do a git commit. The message I'm just going to do uh, updating packages. Not a very descriptive <laughs> commit, but really there's that's all we're basically doing. And then the package builds have been updated. Of course, you guys don't actually use the package builds. You guys, when you're installing my software, are getting the binaries from DTOS-core-repo. So this is the one we really uh, want to take a look at. And yeah, there's a lot of new binaries that, and the signature files that go along with them. Let's go ahead and add them all. Oh, that's going to take a minute because uh, some of the binaries are big. Okay, get, and let's do a commit. And I'm going to say uh, updating database, git push. And once that's done, that's it. Uh, we should have new packages available new versions for those of you that are running DTOS some of the packages now have new versions and of course the real one that we wanted to do was the uh, new DTOS-XMOBAR package so let's actually see if that works the only way to see if that works is let's uh let's open vert manager what I'm gonna do is I have some extra clean VMs. So these are just Manjaro KDE. I've got three of them here. And these are unadulterated. <laughs> this is just straight Manjaro KDE. Uh, I haven't installed anything extra on it. And let's uh, get clone the, D the DTOS script and see if it actually installs correctly. Appreciate that super chat there from Alexander. Uh, you didn't leave a message or a comment, but I do appreciate the, the super chat there. All right, so got this VM here. And let me kill 
Hamac here. All right, I'm gonna open console with a K. And I'm just gonna do a git clone, https colon colon uh, gitlab.com slash dwt1 slash dtos. We clone that, then cd into dtos, and then run dtos, the, the script. And let's see if the script actually runs. I'm just gonna continue. And if, it's, if the script was going to fail, typically this is where it fails. As soon as it starts installing stuff from Pagman, this is typically where the script would crap out if there were any errors. So usually once you get to this point, the script's going to complete just fine. It's going to take a while because it's going to install 337 packages. The main thing I want to know is uh, does it actually install the trayer padding icon script, which I could open up console, or not console, uh, Dolphin, and go to the root directory, slash Etsy, and eventually it's gonna create slash Etsy slash DTOS. It hasn't created it just yet. I think it'll create it after this here. Yeah, once it starts, it's not the download uh, of the files, but actually the installation of the files is when it finally creates slash Etsy slash DTOS and dot config xmobar and there is trayer padding icon dot sh. So that fixed the trayer issue that people were having with xmobar. I'll go ahead and let the installation complete here just to test it out, but it looks like the script is working just fine. So that solves the issue on my GitLab that people were having with Trayer. So what I would do now is this issue here. I'd already responded. I told him I would create a new package for DTOS XMO bar that included the Trayer padding uh, script. I said I will fix it in a few minutes on a live stream, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, should be fixed now. And I didn't have the uh, name of the script correct in my previous post. I think I made the same mistake thinking it was just trayer-padding.sh. It's trayer-padding-icon. Okay. All right, one bug taken care of. And that was a pretty major one. That was the main one. I wanted to take care of today uh, this one here that says xmonad recompile error i think i already fixed this one yeah so here's the thing uh, there was an issue earlier today where the database for dtos core repo was broken what it was is if i go back uh, where i had the two terminals dtos dash package build dtos dash core dash repo i had rebuilt all the packages uh but then i Somehow, they all didn't get added to the database. It was a partial update of the database. So the database had some older versions of these packages still in the database, but in the package builds themselves, there were newer versions. Anyway, it, it caused an issue. So the fix for that was me rerunning the build packages script, rebuilding the database. But you guys that had already tried to install those uh, packages with the broken database, uh, you were going to keep getting errors and errors and errors because Pac-Man has a cache file uh, where it stores that database that you had already previously downloaded. You need to remove that. The way to remove that is with sudo pacman space dash capital S lowercase c c. And then answer yes to all the questions about removing all the Pac-Man cache and logs and everything else. Just, re just remove everything and then do a uh, resync with sudo pacman dash capital S lowercase y and then everything should work again. Well, let's see, anything else? Uh, yeah, I mentioned the broken database again here and that is pretty much yet on the open issues some of the closed issues that i dealt with earlier is there anything i want to mention yeah uh some of you guys that were installing this on garuda were getting this issue here where you were having my conky and then this conky what it is is 
you guys, uh, if you're kind of new to Linux, you know, there's auto start programs in Linux, you know, many desktop environments like GNOME and uh, KDE, XFCE, many desktop environments have programs that auto start stuff for you. You guys have probably seen those programs. Well, what about window managers, window managers like Xmonad? How do you handle things auto starting? Well, you can do that one of at least two ways. Uh, one way is to put these programs in an auto start hook in your Xmonad config themselves. But another way is there's a folder in dot config called auto start. And, and that's typically where many distributions place uh, programs that they want to auto start, especially if they install multiple window managers. Uh, that's typically how they handle that. And that's why you're going to, especially distributions like Garuda, uh, Arco, uh, Endeavor, probably. I don't know. I, I haven't checked Endeavor. But, you know, like uh, Arco, you know, has a million different window managers they install. And instead of having all of those configs, having a auto start hooks in them, how they do this. And this is how I would handle it is in dot config in your home folder in dot config, there is a directory called auto start and whatever programs get placed here. These are just dot desktop files, whatever dot desktop files you throw into this folder. Those are the programs that get auto started for you. So, So this here, again, if you were uh, trying the DTOS script in Garuda and getting this weird double conky, it's because Garuda has a conky dot desktop file in dot config slash auto store. Delete that. All right. I'm going to go back to the chat and I'm sure I've missed some interesting chat here. I do apologize not keeping up with the chat too much, uh, obviously working on uh, some of the script here. Let's see. Uh, DT, when do you think DTOS might be ready for production use? It's close now. Honestly, when I released it uh, this past uh, Sunday, you know, I worked on it all day Saturday and then released it Sunday. I knew sun when I released it Sunday, it was very much beta, really beta, more like alpha quality. Uh, but I was actually surprised that probably most of you guys that tried to install it, it installed just fine for you guys. And many people didn't report any issues at all. But of course, a lot of people did. You know, it just depended on what distribution you were using and things like that. But now, having worked on it all week and responding to, again, I probably responded to, I don't know, 20, 30 bugs, you know, that were actual bugs and I fixed. Like, I went into the code and I solved that problem. You know, there's probably probably been about 30 of those that I fixed this week. So already a lot of the things that were causing other people, the, the things that were real showstoppers that were causing people not to be able to complete the script, we fixed a lot of that. So now I don't, I don't think anybody's going to have a problem where they try to install this now and it just doesn't work. I listen, I hope not. But you never know. <laughs> I guess new things are going to crop up. There's so many different distributions, so many Arch-based distributions, so many of these Arch-based distributions. Many of them have multiple editions. I like, you know, Arco has like 26 different ISOs, and not all of them are the same. Not all of them have the same software installed. So you may it, DTOS if you run it on one version might work, it might not work on another. I can't possibly try them all myself. Again, that's why we kind of did the uh, the public beta. I'm sure we're going to have more issues crop up. But uh, if you're asking, could you install this on a production machine? You you probably could, but I'm still going to warn you that hey, if it breaks things. Don't blame me. Because technically it's still beta. I'm still calling it a beta as of today. All right. So this issue with the dot config slash auto start, I let this guy know that that was probably the case. That look in home dot config slash auto start, and if there was a file called conky, delete it. And he said, yes, you were right. I just deleted conky. Okay. So all of this is cool. And I don't mind showing these messages here on GitLab because this is all public uh, here. So no private messages or anything. You can do uh, like uh, private repositories and things like that. And I can actually set up uh, kind of like this issues here where instead of it being public, it was 
just a it's a, a private thing where only me and maybe the people I've granted developer access could read these messages. That's not the case here. This is all all public. Anybody that goes to my GitLab can can read this. Let's see, uh, host Grady. Will the DistroTube website have the licensing issues sorted on camera or off camera? Let's take care of that right now. So I mentioned we would take care of some issues on probably more of my GitLab repositories other than just DTOS. So, so what he's talking about here is, uh, let me go to this uh, clean workspace. I'm going to open up a new instance of Brave. Um, let's see. Well, it still sent me to this workspace, but let's go to this workspace. So I have a repository that has the source code for distro.tube. And it, there's no licensing information, no copyright information on the website itself or in the repository on GitLab that has the source code. So let's fix that. Uh, you know what? I'll... Do this in a separate browser instance because I'm going to go back to the DTOS repository. So let's just open uh, GitLab and I've got more the personal projects page here that lists like I guess your, your 10 most recent repositories that have had issues and things like that. I need to view all because I've got more than 10 repositories and the one I'm looking for is distro.tube and this is the source code for my website, which is written in org mode. What it is, it's a bunch of org <laughs> org files that Emacs has a, the ability to export to HTML. There's the HTML, the exported HTML. And of course, then I, I push it to the website and it goes live. Uh, I've got this issue. Uh, you should add licenses to articles and website as a whole. And I mentioned that I have some user submitted uh, stuff on my website so most of the website I can just slap a Creative Commons license on it and say hey you're free to do this as long as you give an attribution back to where you found it no big deal but I have uh, guest articles I have I don't know 10 12 articles here that were submitted by people in the community and I can't license these under a Creative License or a Creative Commons license without these people's permission. You know, you can't, you can never add a license to somebody else's work. You know, you just can't do that. I mean, even though they didn't license it initially and they freely gave it to me, still, it's not mine. So I can't, I, I'm not going to just slap a CC license on it. But I can slap a CC license on the rest of the site. So that's what I'm going to do. And how I'm going to handle that. Um, here's how I'm going to handle that. Uh, by the way, DTOS looks like it's going to install just fine in the VM. Uh, let's get, get out of that. All right. So let's go to GitLab dash repos distro dot tube slash. Well, let's just get into the file manager. What I did is last night in preparation for this, I created a footer. The footer is going to read uh, copyright by me. You know, the site's copyrighted by me. The page is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. I gave a link to where they can find a copy of that license if they want to read it. Then I, the source code for distro.tube can be found on GitLab, and that is actually a link to the distro.tube repository on GitLab. User submitted contributions to the site are welcome as long as the contributor allow, agrees to license their submission with the CCBYND 4.0 license that the rest of the site is going to be licensed under. So I'm going to add this footer to every page on the site except those guest article pages. That's how I'm going to handle that. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to contact the guest article authors. And as they allow me to, I will add this footer <laughs> to their articles as well, hopefully, so I can get the entire site licensed uh, with the CC license. If I never hear from these uh, people that submitted these articles, uh, you know, if I can't get in touch with them, then those pages, of course, will just remain without a license. Um, because, again, there's not much I can do about that. But that's how I'm going to handle that. So, 
what I would do at this point, I have footer.org. What I would do is then I would, for example, go into uh, index.org, which is my index page for the site. So what I would do is at the very bottom, I'm going to do an include for footer.org. And if I uh, exported this to HTML, now let me go into that repository, distro.tube, into the HTML, the converted HTML. There's uh, index.html. And if I open this with Brave, you guys didn't see that because it was off camera, but there is the new page and at the bottom you see footer with licensing information so every page on the site will get that include so they have the footer except for these articles until i talk to the authors and uh, see if they're cool with it being licensed under creative commons so that is that So uh, Big Pod is in the chat. He actually has some some articles that were submitted, I think, at least one. Now, I'll contact Big Pod and ask him about the licensing information, if he's cool with a CC license or, or whatever, uh, any free license. I really don't care. The thing right now is there's no licensing information at all on the site, and that's an issue. It's, it's not the fact that what the license is or isn't, it's the fact that there, there just isn't a license at all. And you never want to have a project of any kind that doesn't have a license. Let's see. Uh, hi, DT. Continue on merge requests and show us how to do uh, manage, how do you manage conflicts? Well, I have to have one. So <laughs> that's the problem with that. Uh, because we've already done the merge request for uh, DTOS. There was just one that I could do on camera. I actually don't get too many merge requests in any of my repositories that uh, I have to worry about conflicts. Typically, the only time you have a, a conflict is if you know more than one person has, has pushed a merge request and their merges kind of conflict with each other. Which doesn't happen too often, you know, unless you, you go a while without taking a look at the merge request. So it's not something you have to deal with very often. At least I don't have to deal with it very often. Of course, I don't have anything that's a, a terribly active project, you know. This is not a big project. And if you've got a, a major piece of software with you know, millions of users around the world and you get thousands of people contributing to the code and a lot of people are, you know, uh, downloading it, you know, locally to their machine, you know, get cloning it and working on their own thing. And then you got a whole bunch of people trying to merge it all back in. Yeah, then you have to deal with with conflicts. I, I luckily don't have to deal with that. It's very rare. Uh, free and open sourced private repository. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the comment there is. I don't think I have any private repositories at the moment, though, if that was for me. Uh, but I, I don't know why you couldn't license a private repository under, uh, I, I, yeah, obviously you have to make the source code available. But just because you make your source code available, you still may want a, a private repository. You may want to, you know, like have a private uh, uh, issue tracker, for example. Maybe you don't want that those discussions to be publicly available. Th you know, things not necessarily related to the code. The thing with free software, though, the code does have to be available. And the license has to be made available, obviously. You have to ship a, a copy of the license with the software always. Uh, let me go back to the chat. I know I missed a ton of chat. I do apologize, guys. Dropping frames. That was probably the uh, VM that was uh, doing the uh, installation of uh, DTOS. Oh, password. 
And let's make fish the default shell, and it says DTOS installed correctly. And of course, that took longer than it should because we left this VM running for a while. But anyway, just to verify that that worked correctly, make sure that the uh, trayer uh, error that we were fixing earlier does work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually log into Xmonad and verify that it works. So I'm going to change the session from Plasma to Xmonad. Let's log in. Um, get rid of the uh, welcome message from Manjaro. And Traeger with the padding script does work now. So you see, it actually makes room for the icons, although some of the icons are black against my black uh, panel. You can't read them, but that's working correctly. So that was a major issue that if you installed DTOS prior to about an hour ago <laughs> on the stream, I rebuilt that peg. I, I fixed it, built the new version of DTOS dash X Mobar. So anybody that has already installed DTOS, what you need to do, here's how you fix that. I pushed a new package. So if you already previously installed it, what you would need to do, do a sudo pacman dash capital S DTOS dash X Mobar to get the latest package. Uh, zoom in here in the VM. Um, we've already got the latest package, but let's assume you didn't. What it's going to do is it's going to download and install that new DTOS dash X Mobar is going to tell you exactly where it placed those config files. Slash Etsy slash DTOS slash dot config slash X Mobar. Uh, go in there and copy that Trayer padding icon script over into your home. Slash dot config slash X Mobar. Or what you could do, I actually haven't tried this. I added this the other day because I got tired of copying things over uh, an alias. DTOS copy. What this should do should make a backup of your .config folder just in case we booger it up, and then it should copy over everything from slash etsy slash DTOS into your home. Let's verify this. This actually works. So DTOS copy, and that actually did not work. We are in the uh, fish shell. That's probably an error with fish because uh, the syntax is different. I'm probably gonna have to take a look at that off camera. Let's try it in bash. Yeah, overwrite. Oh, we're gonna have to overwrite everything. Well, that's fine. It's gonna over... <laughs> yeah, I'll work on that off camera, so. But it does work. The alias works in Bash. It'll work in ZSH. I've got to fix it in Fish or just delete it from Fish. I don't know. Let's vim the dot bash RC. Because in my Bash RC, what it is, just for safety reasons, I have CP alias to CP dash I for interactive, meaning if you're going to override a file, Ask me about it before you do it. The problem is we were overriding a lot of files, and that's annoying. Uh, so, yeah, I may want to rethink that alias. Anyway, I'll probably redo uh, DTOS-Bash, DTOS-ZSH, and DTOS-Fish uh, maybe later this evening or tomorrow. And work on those two aliases. I mean, the, the configs are fine. It's just those two aliases that were uh, the DTOS copy uh, aliases. Apparently, they're they're broken right now. Th those are not major bugs, though. Those are those have really nothing to do with you guys installing DTOS. The thing is, since that didn't work, what you would have to do is you would you know manually what you want to do is go into slash etsy slash DTOS. That directory not there. It's got to be. Hmm. Yeah, it's there. I don't know why PC Man FM wasn't showing it. Maybe I didn't type the uh, path right. But anyway, 
what you want to do is uh, further, let's cd into config, xmobar, clear the screen. All right. There is trayer padding icon dot sh. What you'd want to do at this point, you want to copy that into your home dot config slash xmobar to get that new config that we just uh, pushed today. And overwrite, obviously, you want to answer yes to that. So that's how you would do that manually if you get that update to DTOS dash xmobar. And you, obviously, you're going to want the fixed uh, script. So that's how you do that. All right. Let's see. We've been streaming for about an hour. I probably don't want to start anything else that is going to be a big project to do on camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and force this VM off. But that is how I've been testing uh, DTOS. I've got these cloned VMs. So I just uh, ran DTOS in this VM. Now I'm going to delete it. <laughs> oh, and what I'll do is I keep this Manjaro KDE VM. I keep it up to date. But other than that, it's just strictly Manjaro out of the box. Just every now and then I update it and then I clone it. Uh, and that way I can test DTOS and I don't have to go back and reinstall Manjaro every time I want to test out the DTOS script. I can just keep cloning the already made VM. I also have uh, Endeavor in which I can clone. Uh, I don't have any vanilla Arch Linux VMs at the moment. I did have one, but it was uh, broken. So I actually deleted it, so I need to get me a new Arch Linux VM. I do have some Arco VMs. I believe I've tested uh, DTOS in these. That's why they're here. All right, so uh, we addressed at least some of the issues with DTOS. I also addressed some of the issues with uh, distro.tube earlier. So we'll... We'll add some footer information. I'll do that off camera because I'm going to have to manually go in each and every file, uh, every page for the site, and add uh, that include for the footer, with the exception, of obviously, of the, the guest articles. Uh. Well, let me go back to the chat. So we'll spend a, a few minutes... Uh, Hanging out with you guys in the chat. Any questions, comments, anything you guys want to talk about? Let's see. DT, why aren't you using GitLab CI CD to automate package building on GitLab uh, builders? And that is a good question, Big Pod, because we do do some automation on the DM scripts repository. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the DM scripts, that is my uh, D menu scripts. Well, I say it's my D menu scripts. It's got a million D menu scripts now because of uh, community contributions. So DM scripts. You guys have not installed this. Check it out. Here is a list of all of the scripts that are in there right now. And I haven't actually tested out some of these because uh, some of these are rather new. Well, it's uh, actually a very active repository. But Really cool. Those of you that want to install DM scripts, there is a uh, AUR package. Those of you that are trying out DTOS, though, uh, you guys have DM scripts already installed. It's in the DTOS core repository, and it gets installed with DTOS. And if you want those uh, scripts to, to activate, uh, I have a few of them uh, set to key bindings. I, there's typically super p plus another letter. So if I do a, a super P and then I uh, for image, you can think of it as an image, <laughs> it's a screenshot. And what this does is you tell it which monitor you want to take a screenshot of or the active window or do you want to select a region, etc. And it saves it to either a file or to your clipboard depending on the next question you answer. Super P followed by M is the man page script where I can search for a man page. Maybe I want the man page for DM scripts, for example. Then a, a terminal opens with the man page for DM scripts. And it lists all the scripts <laughs> for the DM scripts uh, package there. 
If I do uh, DPM again, there was also a random man page option where you just get a random man page. In this case, it looks like it randomly selected STRSPN. I have no idea what that is. If I want to read about it, though, I just hit enter and I get the man page for that. Uh, but yeah, obviously I need to automate some of this. One of the things with uh, building the packages and automating that... I often get errors sometimes, sometimes unforeseen errors. Like sometimes I'll, I'll run the script to, uh, you know, build the database. It doesn't happen every that often, but sometimes it will fail. And it fails for no real reason because I'll go back and rerun it and it'll work again. So I kind of like doing that uh, on my own right here in front of me, you know, rather than have it automated and having it fail and not know about it. Although, I mean, I would get, obviously, notifications that that it fails. But I'd rather, you know, I, I'll just up, update the database when I feel like it, probably a couple of times a week. And it's pretty much automated. I don't have to really do anything. I just run a script. I could automate it a little more than I, I've done, but realistically, I mean, I, I enter three commands. So uh, take the package builds and make the binaries and place them all in the correct repositories. After that, all I need to do is enter the, the git commands to push it all. So. Let's see. Uh, hey, DT, in one of your videos, uh, instead of doing git pull, you reclone the repo. Why, though? Asking. Curious computer science master student. Um... I'm not sure which video you're talking about or what I possibly was doing. Instead of uh, doing a git pull, oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I could have just uh, done a git pull, I guess. Yeah. What it was is I, I was testing out DTOS and uh, I updated uh, the repositories and then I went back to the VM and I just did a REM RF the uh, DTOS repo and downloaded a fresh repo or cloned a fresh repo. Yeah, I mean, it's whatever. I mean, you could have done it either way, right? Uh, on my local machine, I would never remove a repository, typically. Uh, the way I did in that VM, I would always just do a, a pull. I, I, why did I do it differently in the VM? I don't know. Um, let's see, will the DistroTube website have the licensing issue sorted on, can oh, we've already, I must be way behind, or maybe he asked it again, I just missed it. I did miss a super chat earlier from Hidden Gems, he said, I don't see you live on Odyssey, why? I haven't tried out live streaming on Odyssey yet, I would like to, although I am a little concerned about Odyssey these days. I still promote it heavily, and I hope it succeeds because I think it's the best free and open source alternative. It's the best alternative as far as a video platform to YouTube. I, I think that's clear. It was the one that I still think has the most chance to succeed, but the problem is when the SEC started investigating Library, the corporation, and the price of LBC crashed. And because of that, a lot of the people that were on library, a lot of the, especially the bigger content creators that were there, obviously to make money. I mean, uh, nobody spends, you know, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, in many cases making content and, and not to make anything. You know, and certainly nobody wants to go broke making video content. And when the price of LBC crashed, I don't know. I, I, unless, Unless library wins that lawsuit <laughs> and the price of LBC then goes back up to something reasonable, I do worry about the platform. I'm still there. I'm still going to advocate it every chance I get on camera. On as You guys, the viewers, obviously, the price of LBC, you don't care. But the content creators, I, I just hope that we don't see like a mass exodus of content creators from the platform at some point. Because there were a lot of people that Odyssey was strictly their platform because, you know, they got booted off of YouTube for whatever reasons, or they chose to leave YouTube before getting booted. Uh, and, you know, some of the bigger channels were making a lot of money in LBC. 
And now the LBC, which at one time was worth, at its highs, it was worth nearly 45 cents. One LBC was 45 cents. As of this morning, I checked it, it's worth three cents. <laughs> That's a big drop. At one point, it had crashed all the way down to like one and a half cents. That was, ah, that's bad. So I do worry about Odyssey, but I'm still on the bandwagon. Uh, I'll probably be the last one to jump off. I'm still hanging on to all my LBCs. Uh, Tech Hut says, let's go. Appreciate that. We're going. Uh, probably go for a little while. I'm, I'm not in a hurry to shut the stream down. I'll probably stream, I don't know, uh, another 10, 15 minutes. see can we find these shortcuts documented somewhere that's the next thing i'm working on one of the reasons uh i was working on distro.tube yesterday other than the person that asked me to add the uh license information which again i'll get to that here in the next uh, day or two but the other reason is i wanted to create pages about dtos so i created this page last night uh, it's a very basic page just tells you how to install it, although there's an error because it tells you to run dtos.sh. We've actually renamed that without the .sh extension, so I need to fix that. <laughs> but other than that, I give you the key bindings, the some of the default key bindings for Xmonad in DTOS. You won't find key bindings for to Emacs, but I would assume you guys would be able to locate that information uh, Emacs is kind of self-documenting. Uh, I may eventually put some basic uh, Emacs commands or key bindings here as well. Those of you that are not sure how to use Qt Browser, because I've had people ask about Qt Browser. Um, Qt Browser, the commands for it are... You know, there's just a few basic commands you really need to know about Qt Browser. You probably could just do a man Qt Browser. Um, does it actually give you... Uh, it doesn't look like it does. I was going to see if the man page did. I guess it doesn't. I guess I should document Cube Browser as well, which you guys, I'm using Brave here on camera. Some of you guys were wondering about why Cube Browser in DTOS. Cube Browser is a nice browser. Chromium Engine, it's fast, it's light, it's keyboard driven. It's a really nice browser. But then you're like, well, I never see DT use Cute Browser on camera. When I record my videos, I can't really use Cute Browser because there's one. It's not a bug or a problem to, to me, but it doesn't have a good ad block. I don't care about watching ads or, you know, if I'm getting ads, you know, reading an article or whatever. Uh, I don't mind that because I know it helps pay the person behind that website or that article, that blog, that video, so I, I don't care about ads, but when I'm recording my videos, I can't have ads playing, especially multimedia ads, and that's why Brave, you know, it just makes sense. It's got built-in ad block, and it's good, so uh, if I didn't, if I didn't do the YouTube channel, I probably would use Cute Browser all the time. Uh, let's see. And w one other thing, I, maybe at some point I should actually think about packaging Brave for the DTOS core repository. Probably won't do that, though. Uh, eventually, though, I expect Brave to actually be in the core Arch repositories. I'm surprised it isn't already. Uh, I think it's still an AUR package. But eventually, eventually Brave actually needs to be part of the core repositories because there's way too many people use Brave these days for it not to be. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I honestly worry about Odyssey when copyright catches up to it. Yeah. And if there are any copyrighted videos uploaded, lawsuits may start rolling in. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how that will affect them or not. The SEC investigation is is, is the bigger deal. Can you include multiple screen support? A script to detect when you disconnect or connect a second screen? Uh, it's not something I do. Obviously, I'm, I've made a proper desktop, and I've got multi-monitors that are always plugged in. 
I'm sure it could be done. Will I do it? No. So, sorry. Um, and people ask about that all the time. I know a lot of you guys do that. You guys use a laptop and then you plug in a second monitor. And I hear from you guys, oh, it's a little weird. It's not something I ever do. Even when I use my laptops, I just use the laptops. If I wanted something with a whole bunch of monitors, you know, I've got a desktop. Uh, but I understand many people, all they have is a laptop. Their laptop is actually their desktop. And when they need it to, for it to act like a desktop, you know, with a big display, they just plug in a display to the laptop. I, I get that. I, I'm just not one of those people that do that. So, yeah, don't expect that from me. So. Uh, DT, I'm planning on starting to sell computers. <laughs> uh, you're going to start selling computers with DTOS, but... Do you want anything besides recognition? Hey, if you can make it happen, go for it. Hey, DT, LibreWolf is getting better. Yep, I've still got LibreWolf, I think, installed on this system. I've got several browsers that, uh, and I open them every now and then. I, I, I did some stuff with LibreWolf the other day. Uh, I, I know I opened it on camera a couple of times. I think I was doing something about a browser plugin. Um, I demonstrated it in both uh, some Chromium-based browsers and Firefox-based browsers. So I know I've still got LibreWolf installed. I just don't do too much with it. Uh, I've been kind of happy with Brave. And again, for video content, you know, I've got uh, scenes set up that are looking for a specific window, Brave windows. So typically I just, when you guys see me on camera using a browser, that's why it's Almost always brave. Just because I've got things set up for brave. But yeah, Libre Wolf is good. I do like it. All right, guys. Uh, let's give it another uh, five minutes or so, and then we're going to shut it down. If I keep the stream kind of to a manageable length, hopefully it'll get synced properly over to Odyssey. You got any other questions or comments? I'm gonna go back to the DTOS repo and see if we've got any new issues, anything that uh, no more merge requests. So yeah, we really did everything I wanted to do. There are some things that are were not listed as issues with DTOS. I eventually want to do uh, one thing is, and I've got it here, but let's actually just take a look at it in Emacs. It'll be easier to read a lot of this in Emacs, or at least easier to zoom in and out. But uh, installation instructions. Um, recently, I fixed a bug with, uh, well, it's not a bug, but the, the script was failing anytime you answered anything other than yes to Pac-Man's questions about conflicting packages, because some of the packages in DTOS-Core-Repo conflict with packages that were already installed by the default Arch repositories or the Manjaro repositories, Arco repositories, etc. And how I fix this, if I go down to now where it installs packages from package list.txt, you see I now have this weird flag that you probably have never seen before. Dash dash ask for. Now that I found that in Pac-Man's source code. <laughs> Pac-Man, their source code, is actually hosted on GitLab. And there's a file called alpm.h. And there is a list of flags. And number four is one where those uh, conflicts and it's asking about remove packages. It will automatically answer yes. And the reason this is important is because by default, the answer is no. So I can't just make this like dash dash no confirm because people ask, hey, can't you just dash dash no confirm it? No, because no confirm goes with the default answer, which is no. I need it to be the inverse answer, which is yes. Well, the Pac-Man devs have all these extra flags and options in Pac-Man source code. They don't make it publicly known that they're there. They're completely undocumented. You won't find it in Pac-Man's uh, man page or anything, but they have these extra options for testing Pac-Man. So they're experimental, but I'm going to use this one here because it serves my purpose. So dash dash ask for 
answers yes to all the an uh, questions Pac-Man asks about conflicting packages and removing the current package and replacing it with my packages. That's what that does. Now, somebody asked me, well, couldn't you just use the yes command? Uh, which I could. I, I, you know, now that I think about it, couldn't you just use yes and, you know, uh, pass that along to Pac-Man and then whatever, you know, command you, uh, you the, the package list you're installing and all that. Yes, I could. The problem is, yes, by default, answers yes. It an answers why, I believe, is what that does. Uh, just why. Which why stands for yes in Pac-Man. So that kind of works if your language is English. <laughs> yes doesn't work if your language is not English. So that's the problem. You know, not everybody's yes is going to actually begin with a Y. So I... So then I would have to worry about first exporting the language to be EN underscore UTFA or, you know, whatever set export the proper language setting to be English. So I could use yes to pipe into Pac-Man. And I was like, uh, you know what? I've Pac-Man already has this built in option. I'm just going to use it. Even though, again, it's an experimental option that they don't publicly tell people about. Since it's there, I'm going to use that. Um, the other thing I was going to mention there was something else that I recently fixed that I thought I would tell people about. I can't remember what it is now that uh, go back to the table of contents. Answering yes. Uh, maybe that was it. Maybe we've covered most of uh, the work that's been done here in the past few days. For the most part, though, I. Uh, well, again, we fixed a ton of bugs in the script, and it works. <laughs> it works a lot better. Uh, for the most part, uh, I, I would say the vast majority of people that have tried to install the script it installs perfectly fine for them, no bugs. All right. Let me go back to the last few... Uh, Questions. Uh, can't you use both dash dash s4 and dash dash no confirm together? I don't know if that would work because no confirm g goes with the default answer, which is no for those remove uh, conflict conflicting packages. Where s4 specifically says if you get asked for removing a package, it's answering yes. That is specifically what ask for is. It's specifically for the remove conflicting packages question and answering yes to it. So I, I, I doubt you could use them together because they're going to want to answer the inverse to the question to, to each other. So I don't think that would work. I, I imagine whichever one you put first as an option would be the one it would go with. Or you may just get an error from Pac-Man saying it doesn't know what to do. Let's see. I love how everyone came here from TFL's stream. Oh, and that was Zany. I caught one of your streams yesterday. Yeah, everybody's been streaming a lot here lately except me. That's why I had to do one today. I, you know, I, didn't, I don't do enough of these. Uh, Sarah's still telling me she's going to start selling computers with DTOS. Yeah, I heard you the first time, Sarah. Go for it. I wish you luck. I hope you make millions. Uh, sorry, DT. Quick question. Does the table of contents auto-generate? Yes. This table of contents, let me zoom out. This, I don't actually do anything. All I did was... Uh, I did a bullet, and I did table of content, and then out to the side, I do this flag, and then... Uh, I started the rest of the outline, and as I'm typing this, this happens. This just automatically appears. That's how that happens. So once you do uh, this flag, or this tag here, dash TOC for table of content, uh, co or colon TOC, colon, yeah, that gets auto-generated as you're building your outline. So yeah, it's really neat. I don't do anything as far as table of contents in any of my readmes, and that's for, uh, and I've got 
table of contents and all of my stuff if I wanted to. Uh, and if I go to my xmonad, uh, readme.org, you know, it's, it's got a table of contents too. It'll tell you all the sections to this config, but you know, I didn't have to go in here and do this. If I if I added a new section right now, uh, let's do new section. And I write that, <laughs> say new section. Now, obviously, I don't want to write that, so. Yeah. Org mode's great. Once you start using org mode, you can never not use org mode for everything. Like, you, you got to use org for everything once you start using it. It's, it's just that fantastic. Like, you, you can never go back to using something like Markdown, for example. Let's see. Why Pac-Man? Because uh, uh, it's an Arch-based uh, <laughs> distribution, so you have to use Pac-Man. It's their package manager, if that was a question. Um, let's see. Hey, DT, we need more Doom Emacs content. That's going to come. Obviously, Doom Emacs is going to be heavily featured in any kind of DTOS content that may be coming forward. Because I'm going to ha obviously have a lot of people trying DTOS that know nothing about Emacs, and specifically do Emacs. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to take care of that. One of the things too, with getting the uh, website going, with getting a, well, I mean, distro.2, but now having a section for DTOS, you know, I'm going to add a lot of content as far as helping people learn how to use all the programs that are going to be built in DTOS. I've got this knowledge base section where, you know, I, I already started writing a little bit of tutorials on how to do some things, uh, for example, the fish shell. And these were just notes that I'd already had. You know, I do a lot of show notes and stuff in org mode. So I already had show notes about various programs like uh, fish and various command line programs. Like here's my show notes about awk from some videos I've done about awk in the past. And since I've already got them written in org, of course, my website's written in org. So it's very easy for me to just take those show notes that I already had written, throw them into this repository of org files that gets converted to HTML. So it was really easy to do that. And then, of course, eventually I'm going to make specifically videos uh, about certain things uh, related to some of these programs and DTOS that people won't know about. And I may make that a part of DTOS, maybe make that a feature is uh, uh, make a whole series of help videos specifically about DTOS. That way, when you install it, maybe I'll have a, I don't, one of the DM scripts, the D menu scripts or something that uh, you can do a search for a specific topic and you'll get DT's video about that topic. Because chances are I've made <laughs> a video about that topic. At this point, I've made uh, something like 1,050 videos. So chances are I probably covered that topic. So that's how I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, speaking, 1,050 videos. Uh, last week marked the four-year anniversary. So I've been doing this channel exactly four years and made 1,050 videos. That's a lot. <laughs> so that's... Yes, I need to step away from the keyboard and, and make sure I take time out for myself sometimes. Sometimes I probably spend too much time working on some of this stuff. Every now and then, I have to make myself take a day off, which I made myself take a day off yesterday because I was really tired on a, when you guys last saw me, what was that, Monday? I made that uh, vlog video. I was like sitting here at the computer looking at, Emacs looking at code and on my third cup of coffee. I'm like, man, I'm tired. I'm going home. <laughs> and then I made that quick vlog video and told you guys, you know, I'm getting comment, uh, content tomorrow. I'm sleeping all day tomorrow. So every now and then I, I'm, I'm pretty, I've gotten better at it where now I know when I've done a little too much and hey, I'm going to take a day or two. Where in the early days of the channel, sometimes I, I pushed it way too hard to the point where, uh, you know, you don't want to ever have health issues. You know, you don't want to, you know, have excess stress and oh, blood pressure problems and things like that that can come with trying to do too much or being pressured, feel like you're pressured to, to do too much. Like, oh, if I don't make uh, video content today, 
all my subscribers are going to leave. Everybody's going to hate me and think I abandoned them. And you feel the pressure the YouTube algorithms. You know, you got to keep up with that. And if you can't take time off or you're going to the, the algorithms are going to punish you. Just just ignore all that. <laughs> just because yeah. that's how people get burnt out is they get into that that trap of thinking that they have to do that. that they're tr it's almost like they're chained to this thing that they can never get away from it. You know, do what you can do. And, you know, when it's time to take a break, take a break. I think that's why I've made so much content in four years. And I really I, I am good with it as far as I don't feel burnout. I don't feel like quitting. I, I don't feel like I, I, I feel like I could do this forever. You know, just getting the proper pacing yourself, really. Uh, somebody asked about the t-shirts. Uh, check the link in the description for my Teespring store for the Ubuntu definition shirt. You'll find the Manjaro definition shirt that you guys have seen me wear on camera as well. Uh, and of course, you'll find the, uh, by the way, I use Arch Mug, which is probably the most popular product on that store. I don't push Teespring that often. I, I, I rarely tell you guys about it, but it's in the sh description of all the shows uh, for those that want to support the channel through a little merch. I do appreciate it. Uh, looking forward anxious, anxiously to DT Ubuntu anytime soon. Uh, no, I would have to maintain my own repository of uh, Debian packages. I can't do that. Uh, I'm already maintaining you know, my repository of Arch packages. So uh, People have asked me, hey, why didn't you make it for uh, Void and FreeBSD and OpenBSD? And I was like, I can't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, you, you just can't. It, it's always going to be Arch. That's just the, ca the case. It's got to be Arch-based. That's what we've chosen. That's what it will always be. Uh, unless Arch dies, then I'll move to something else. But then whatever I move to will still be the only distribution <laughs> or base of distributions you can install it on. I'm not trying to maintain, as it's too much duplication of effort. And honestly, this is not the kind of distribution most people that are running Ubuntu would want to run as far or, you know, how many people that are running Ubuntu really want Xmonad and all the Haskell stuff and Doom Emacs and, you know, all this command line stuff and all the Rust programs and, you know, the cool uh, terminal program, you know, the, the fish shell and all that. How many people running Ubuntu are really that interested in, you know, something like that? Most of those People are probably on something like an Arch Linux-based distribution anyway. So. Not to mention Ubuntu. It, it'd probably be hard to make a script like this for Ubuntu because Ubuntu has so many meta packages built uh, around getting its proper uh, Ubuntu desktop with GNOME and all of its extensions and things. Uh, it would be more work to do this on a, on a distribution like Ubuntu than it is on Arch. It's a lot easier to do this for Arch. Let's see, tech guy. How can I re restore Conky after rearranging the displays with Arander and fix it, uh, fix it to default first time using any script? So what you want to do there, what he's saying is... Uh, the screen resolution's wrong when he first logs in. Imagine I've got a conky here. I don't. But he changes the screen resolution, and now the conky's in a different place because the screen resolution changed, and so the conky moved. <laughs> and it's like now he has to kill the conky, restart the conky so it's in its proper place. How can he do all of that without having to do all those commands? So here's how you do that. A render, if you're changing with the... Uh, by running a script with a render because a render when you save the config it saves it to your home directories uh, dot screen layout let me see if I actually have one I don't actually use a render for anything but I have demonstrated it on camera before yeah I don't actually have it yeah but what you want to do is in your startup hook where your window manager starts have it run a render to set your display before you run the conky command. Does that make sense? What I would do is I would have it run the a render command to set your screen resolution, and then I would tell it to sleep for a second or two, and then run the 
uh, conky command. That's how I would do that. Let's see. I'll do this on camera. A render, I'm sure, is installed, even though I've never used it. So this is what a render looks like. Imagine that I had to rearrange all my monitors to get them in the correct order. I didn't. They're already in the correct order. But imagine, for the sake of argument, I just rearranged them. And now I want to save them. Click the uh, layout, save as. And it's going to save it into my home directory, dot screen layout, and then name of... Or is that the name of the script? Let's see. No, that's a directory, I think. Yeah. And then I could do, I don't know, layout. So what this is, uh, PC Man FM, and now there's a directory called dot screen layout. Layout.sh. That is a script that runs the arander command to set my monitors in the correct orientation. Because... You know, it saves it to this file. What you want to do is in your auto start hook in your window manager or whatever it is you do to auto start things, make sure that auto starts first in the chain of events and then Kagi auto starts later. So if you were doing this in a script, what you would want to do is you would want to make sure that you uh, execute layout.sh and then what you'd want to do is... Uh, probably want to sleep for I don't know two seconds and then you know another command would be the conky command which is typically conky space dash C for config and then path to the conky file that's kind of how I would do that with with scripting or, or your window manager config or however you're you're starting things but if you change the screen resolution before Conky starts, then Conky will appear in the right place. All right. I hope that answered the question. Uh, let's see. Uh, it would be great to see more entry-level content since Linus and Luke from LTT are introducing Linux to a whole lot of newbies via uh, their home computer challenge. Well, you know, you guys get some plenty of entry-level content here. I try to do a good mix. Uh, obviously, things like today, you know, a lot of the stuff I did on camera today kind of, you know, you were, you'd were you have to know a little bit, you know, coming into some of what I did today. But there's plenty of videos I do that are very basic as far as for the absolute new to Linux user. But you can't do all your, you know, I would never do content all the time that's strictly for the person that's brand new to Linux because and then you know the people that have been watching you for now four years you know some of these people have been using Linux for four years they're not beginners anymore <laughs> they want content they want content that's appropriate for them you know it's hard you know being a, a content creator it, it's hard to, you know what kind of what what's your audience you know who, who are you making videos for sometimes I will say, you know, I'm made videos about practically everything, <laughs> but probably most my most popular videos tend to be videos specifically about Arch Linux and about the terminal or command line applications and about tiling window managers. Not necessarily noob to topics, you know, those are not topics that a brand new to Linux user, for example, are usually interested in. See, Nova says, hey, I am finally get to watch a stream of yours. Huh. Well, we're going to shut it down just in a couple of more minutes. I'm just getting a, a few questions read here at the end. Uh, let's see. Uh, Terminal for Life says, I was just live streaming when it randomly ended on me. Now I know why, because you were streaming. <laughs> uh, well, I tell you what, I'm about to end too. You can start yours back up and we'll send everybody there. Or if anybody else wants to start live streaming, go ahead and announce it while the chat's still going. I'm sure we've got probably several content creators in the chat. Any of you guys doing anything uh, here in the next few hours? Let everybody know. Let's see. 
Yeah, I'm not saying only do new content. Yeah, and I don't want to only do new content. I also don't want to only do content where going into it, people are expected to have a certain level of knowledge. I like doing stuff for the absolute new to Linux user too. And I try to remind myself to do that every now and then. Because I do think it's it's very important that we continually reach out to those people that are still using Windows and Mac, you know, people that are not necessarily tech savvy. Because we want to win hearts and minds, you know, not just of the nerds, right? We want normal people to come over to Linux too. We don't want this to just be the nerds club. Yeah, Zany said he's doing something. Okay, well, you guys go check out Zany's stream. Those of you not subscribed to Zany, uh, check him out. Those of you not subscribed to Terminal for Live, check him out. Uh, Tech Hut was here earlier. Check out Tech Hut. Uh, yeah, just subscribe to everybody in the chat. Uh, RootBSD says, I'm working on a video that showcases all of OpenBSD security tech and mitigation. So you OpenBSD fans, go check out RootBSD. That way you can leave me alone about OpenBSD. Yeah, let's make this the Nerds Club. No, we want normal people. If it's just the Nerds Club, then where's all the hot women, right? <laughs> we we got to have the hot women in the club too, right? <laughs> let's see. Decimal Void says, you have introduced me to Qtile Window Manager. Love you, DT. Yeah. And Qtile... I, I, I love Qtile. And here lately, spending so much time in Xmonad, uh, obviously working on my Xmonad scripts and everything, I have looked a little bit at Qtile here, my Qtile configs here in the last few days because they were broken. I had to fix some stuff. But I do want to eventually get a uh, installation script working with my Qtile configs too because Qtile is so similar to Xmonad as far as look and feel and function. Qtile was designed to be a clone of Xmonad. They just wrote it in Python rather than Haskell. So it would be very easy to just package up like my Qtile configs and add it to DTOS. And, you know, log into Qtile or Xmonad and pretty much get the same desktop experience. Because they're, again, practically the same window manager. The Qtile guys were Xmonad fans. They just, you know, wrote their window manager essentially to be Xmonad. Just not in Haskell. Damn, DT, you've actually convinced me now. We need more women. We, we need a lot more women in tech in general, but especially in free and open source software in Linux. When I look at my demographics, as far as the people that watch my videos, this is probably going to shock most of you. What percentage, what you guys, I mean, you're in the chat right now. Look at some of the usernames, some of the avatars. How many females do you guys ever like see in these chat, these YouTube chats? The demographics for my videos, and I get uh, viewers from all over the world. Obviously, YouTube's a pretty much a global platform. Obviously, most of the viewers probably U.S., but by most I mean maybe maybe fifty percent. But the other half are you know all over the world, many countries. But when it, you break it down by gender. 98 point some odd percent of my viewers are male. <laughs> Why is that? You know, uh, there, there could be a lot of reasons for that. Uh, I think the main reason for it is especially just historically, culturally, women generally aren't interested in tech. I mean, let, let's be, be real. Now, in more developed countries... Like, ah, maybe in the U.S., maybe that's not quite the more so than other places. But like in third world countries, I wouldn't expect any women to be, be interested in tech just because of, you know, just the nature of the thing. But I don't think that's a good thing. I don't like this being a boys club. I mean, some of you guys are cool, but I'd like to talk. I'd, I'd like to talk to some females at some point in these YouTube chats. Uh, I get tired of just talking to Terminal for Life and Zany. All right. DT, can we get back on topic and have a look at that new issue? 
Uh, well, I, we're shutting the stream down, so any issues that are on any of my GitLabs at this point, I'm going to take care of off-camera. First one I'm going to take care of probably later this evening or maybe early tomorrow. I'm going to get that uh, that issue with the uh, distro.tube website straightened out. We're going to go ahead and get some uh, licensing information on all of those pages. So, uh, Hey, DT, what's the best way, in your opinion, for a new Linux user to learn about Linux, to use Linux? That's it. Uh, there's, you want to learn something, you got to do it. You got to do it and you got to stick with it. And that's it. You know, people ask this all the time. What's the best way to learn X, Y, Z, whatever it is, Linux or this programming language or even things not tech related, anything in life. What's the best way to learn car repair or whatever? Just do it. That's the only way to learn it. Just do it. And when you do it, you got to stick with it for a while. It can't be one of those these things where you're going to do it for a few days, a few weeks, and yeah, you get bored with it. You're one of these people that, and a lot of people are like this. They're the kind of people that start things and then don't finish it. Or they start things for a while, they get bored with it, and they move on to something else. And that's, that's not the way to be. That's not the way to be in life about anything. You know, when you decide it's something you really want to do, do it. <laughs> Stick with it. Uh, we, people were asking earlier about uh, the gym. I go to the gym all the time. And it's the same thing with people that know they need to get in shape, lose a little weight, be a little healthier, and they maybe open a gym membership and go like three times and then never go back. Why not? It's just they, they can't get into that routine and they can't stick with it. They don't have it's a mental thing. It's the willpower to do it. And that's all it is. When I go to the gym, do I want to be there? No. But guess what? You guys that are young enough that you're in high school or college, you go to school every day. Do you want to? No, but you do it. Why do you do it? Well, you have no choice, right? <laughs> you guys that have a job, right? You're old enough to have a job. You go to work every day, right? Do you want to go to work every day? Probably not, but you do it. Why? Because you have no choice. You got the things, the other things in your life need to be that way. Even though you have a choice, if it's something you've committed to doing, then mentally you have to treat it exactly the same way. I go to the gym every day, not because I want to go to the gym, but I have no choice. I know it's something I have to do. And eventually, when you do these things long enough, they become a routine, they become a habit, and then it's no longer a chore. It's no longer, oh, I got to get up and do this. Now it's just, hey, I got up, it's time to go to the gym because that's my normal routine I do every day. It'd be weird for me not to do it. That's how you, you know, people don't stick to things. When you start something, stick to it. It's all willpower. It's all mental. And it's all habit forming. If you're one of these people that start things and quit things, you probably do it with everything in life. You do it all the time and it's become a habit. You have to break yourself of that habit. And that's hard. All right. Ran over, guys. Uh, had nothing to do with Linux there at the end, but I'm glad we got the life message in there b before we ended. So let me go ahead and get out of here, guys. Before I go, I'm going to thank uh, the patrons here. So I'm going to show some names on the screen here. I want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen here that support me over on Patreon. And show you another list of names here. And that is it for this evening, guys. Thank you for hanging out, all you guys hanging out in the YouTube chat. I appreciate your fine questions and comments. And other than that, I'm out, guys. Peace.